Hey guys, Russ here coming with another fantastic chemistry video and today I'm going over classes of alkyl halides. Now there's a few kinds. There's alkyl halides. And alkyl halides more or less are alkanes attached to some kind of halide. So there's an alkyl halide, for example. Here's another one. First one I drew was an alkyl bromide. Now this is an alkyl iodide. So there, notice how the halide is attached to an sp3 carbon. Alkyl halides, vinyl halides. Vinyl halides are attached directly to carbon-carbon double bonds. There's a a vinyl bromide, and here is, say, a vinyl chloride, for example. There are aryl halides, so there's an aryl bromide, for example. So there are, you know, these are just examples of vinyl, aryl, and alkyl halides, and these are quite common, especially alkyl halides. We're going to be doing quite a bit with them in this chapter and in the rest of the course. Now, one of the more important aspects of organic chemistry is understanding polarity. Polarity essentially means that you have a charge separation. So if we have a carbon attached to a halide, there is charge separation. Chloride is more electronegative, so chloride is delta negative. Carbon is delta positive. So now... This is an important concept. You have to understand that the delta positive carbon will attract negative things, such as a nucleophile, for example, such as anything that's negative. Anything with a negative or a partial negative charge will be attracted to this carbon. Anything with a negative or a partial negative charge will be repelled by this chlorine. All right? So that's important. In order for a negative thing to react with a positive thing, they first must collide. Okay? And it's nice because positive and negative things are attracted to each other. So this carbon will attract a negative entity, such as a nucleophile, which are either negative or delta negative. Okay? And that's an important concept. Now, a nucleophile can attack this carbon, and this chloride can take the bond electrons and go away as a leaving group. That's called a leaving group. Okay? So it's very important that you understand polarity and how it affects reactivity. If you can't identify the delta positives and delta negatives in, an atom, in a molecule, you're already in a lot of trouble. You're already going to have a hard time predicting reactivity. Alkyl halides can be classified as methyl, where X is the generic abbreviation for uh, halide. It could be fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine. <laughs> Alkyl halides can be further classified into methyl, primary, secondary, and tertiary halides. A methyl halide will look like this, CH3X, where X is a accepted abbreviation for all halides. For example, X could have been bromide. So that's a methyl bromide. Primary halides. Such as ethyl halide. So for example, There, this is a primary halide. Secondary halide.
where X, of course, again, is any uh, halogen. Here's an example. Now, these are just simple examples of these things. There are, except for methyl, there are other examples. So there is a secondary iodide. Tertiary. Halide. And of course, that could have any halogen on the tertiary carbon. And let's put a fluoride. We haven't used fluoride yet. Fluoride is not very common. It's common in organic chemistry. You'll see it a lot, but it's not common to do any kind of reactions that we're going to be studying in this chapter. But it's still classified as a halogen, so fluoride can indeed uh, be part of a tertiary halide for sure. Classifications of dihalides. There's geminal and vicinal. Now, a geminal dihalide will put the halogen on, or the two halogens, I should say, on the same carbon. And R can just be the rest of the molecule. doesn't matter what it is. So, for example, we could have a vicinal dibromide, where the bromines are on the same carbon. So, that's a Sorry, that's a geminal dibromide, pardon me. Geminal dibromine on the same carbon. Geminal, they don't have to be halides. They can be any atoms. Uh, if two atoms are on the same carbon, they're referred to as geminal. If you're vicinal, you're on adjacent carbons. So here was an example of vicinal. And then that could be something like... Um, Here's a vicinal dibromide. All right, there you go. So we have geminal, which means the two groups are on the same carbon, and there's vicinal, which means they're on adjacent carbons.